Hi guys, Mrs. Kessel here. Thank you for joining me for our fourth Steam Wars challenge on our way to becoming Jedis, which is roll a pop can. So for this challenge, you are going to use the force, your mind powers, and a little bit of science to roll a pop can without touching it, okay? So there is some science involved, but we are also going to pretend that we're Jedis in training because you are, after all, my young Padawans. Um, if this is the fourth challenge you are doing, amazing. I'm so proud of you for making it this far. If this is your second or third, great. I'm glad you've stuck with it. And if this is your very first Steam Wars challenge you're doing, that's okay. I'm glad you've joined us now. So if this is your first or second or third and you've missed one of the challenges and you want to go back and do it, go for it. Start with this one and then if you have a good time, go back and do the ones you missed, okay? So let's get started. So like I said, this one is called Roll a Pop Can because we are going to make a pop can move roll without touching it. And I'm going to tell you how. So what we need to do first is just like we see Obi-Wan Kenobi here in this gif, he's using the force. He throws these droids backwards without touching them. So how can we move a pop can that way? That's what you're gonna ask. I want you to stop and think right now. How can we make this move without touching it? What other science does this sound like to you? Stop and share your ideas with a family member right now. How could you make this roll without touching it? Hmm. What could we do? After you come up with some ideas when you're talking with your family, I want you to share with them. And then I want you to think about what science you may have learned that this is similar to. So one type of force, scientific force, not a Jedi force, that we're all familiar with is magnets. So here I have some magnets. Now we know that all magnets have a north pole and a south pole. And when we put a north pole and a south pole, the magnets attract. But when I put two poles that are the same together, they repel, and I can show you this on my pencil. So here I just have a regular pencil. I'm gonna put this magnet on it, and I have a purple side up. I'm gonna put an orange side to it. They attract, they stick together. But if I put two purple sides together, they repel. So it looks as though this magnet is just floating there. But really, it's the force from the magnets pushing them apart. I can do the same if I do orange and orange. So this is a magnetic force. We call this a non-contact force. You're gonna use a different kind of non-contact force today. You're gonna to use a force called static electricity. So you might have experienced static electricity when you get your clothes out of the dryer and they stick to you, or it's a warm, dry day out and you have little pieces of paper stuck to your shirt or stuck to your hair. That's because of static electricity. So we are going to use balloons and our hair to create static electricity. Let's see how. So if I were to take a balloon and rub it in my hair, I'm going to count to five. One, two, three, four, five. If you look really closely, it makes my hair stand up. You can see my hair is being pulled. Even though the balloon is not touching my hair, it's pulling my hair away from my head. That force is called static electricity. And that's what you're going to be using to roll this pop can. Now it's important that your pop can is empty, okay? There shouldn't be anything in it, and it needs to be a metal can. Now, I, of course, have a Diet Coke can because we all know I can't live without Diet Coke, but it could be any type of pop can. It could be like a, a can from like Fizzy Water, if your parents drink Red Bull or Monster, like it could be one of those two, as long as it's a metal can. We call these aluminum cans, okay? You need at least one balloon. Depending on how you're going to do this experiment, you might need more balloons, different size balloons, but you need at least one balloon. You need 
hair. Now I have hair that goes down to about my shoulders. You can use short hair, you can use really long hair, you can use medium hair, doesn't matter. And you're gonna need something to measure with because we are going to be measuring the distance of how far we can roll this can, okay? So what you're basically going to do is you're gonna choose a starting line, somewhere on the floor, I suggest. I don't suggest doing it on a table. And don't do it on the carpet, you want it on a hard floor. So if I were in my kitchen, I would pick a starting point. I might even put some tape down so I have a starting line. And you're gonna set the pop can down on the floor. And then you're gonna take the balloon and rub it in your hair for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to try to use the balloon to either push or pull the can without touching it. Now I'm not gonna do it, I want you to figure it out, okay? But the trick is you cannot actually touch the balloon onto the can. They have to be apart. So you're going to have to figure out how to use this force called static electricity to do so, okay? And once you do that, then you're gonna measure how far you were able to push it using either a ruler, a yardstick, a meter stick, a measuring tape, a tape measurer, whatever you have in your house. When we did our flying a glider, if you didn't have um, something to measure with, I let you use your footsteps and you could measure with footsteps. You can do that same thing. If you don't know how to do that, go back to my video for uh, challenge number one, flying a glider, and I explain it in there, and it's also in the slideshow. Now, this uh, slide is just explaining a little bit more about static electricity and exactly how to do it. So you can click on the link to this website, the Science Bob, which will explain it, but I've also copied and pasted some things onto here. Oopsies. And the next slide also just kind of explains the science behind it some more, which I just did, but you can read a little further. Now comes the tricky part. So in science, we have something called variables. When we do an experiment, the variable is the thing you're testing. It's what you change each time. So in this experiment, each person in your family is gonna choose one variable. Have everybody choose a different variable, okay? So what I would do is let's say I choose that I want to test balloon size. I want to compare does a small balloon push the can or pull the can further than a large balloon or a medium balloon? Which one moves it the furthest? Okay, so that is all I would change if I was choosing balloon size. Every time I would rub the balloon for five seconds on my hair or whoever's hair your family has decided, I would not do it on a different person each time. I would do it on that one person every time for the same amount of time and then push the can. You could also choose a variable of hair length. Maybe there's people in your family like um, my son Charlie has short hair. My husband has hair that's short but a little longer and then I have long hair. So maybe we just choose one size of balloon every time I do it with a small balloon, but the first time I do it on my son Charlie's short hair and I push the can or pull the can. The second time I use my husband's hair. The third time I use my own hair, but I would use the same size balloon every single time. You can also change the weight of the can. Since this is an empty can, you can put things in it. One thing you can easily put in here is water. Now I like putting a liquid in here because then it's not going to bang around and change anything, but you could put lots of different things in here. You could start with just an empty can. Once again, pick one size balloon, one hat of hair and stick with it for all of these. And then the next time maybe pour a teaspoon of water in and then try to roll it. And then a tablespoon of water and try to roll it. Just, you know, pay attention to the fact that if you pour more water, past this hole, it's all going to spill out. So that's why I just said a teaspoon and a tablespoon because those are small enough amounts that they won't spill out of this, okay? So each person can pick their own variable. Whatever you choose, it's fine, but like give each person their own to test. And then we'll see, well, which variable was the most effective? Was it more effective to use, to do long hair versus short hair? Was it more effective to use a large balloon or, or a small balloon? Was it more effective? And then you can compare the variables. Okay, well, 
my most effective thing was using a medium-sized balloon. Your most effective thing was short hair. If we compared the results of those, which one was better? So those are some different things to try, and you can do a lot of experiments with this. If you aren't sure exactly how to do this, here's some tips. There's some videos and some things you can read if you still aren't sure how the static electricity is working, okay? As always, you need to make some sort of recording sheet. This you can just draw on a piece of paper. So where it says name a family member, you would put that person's name, variable one. Each person's gonna have different variables. So I would say, okay, my variable was a small balloon and this is the distance it was able to roll. Variable two was a medium balloon. This is the distance it was able to roll. Variable three was a large balloon. This is the distance it was able to roll. Which one of those was most effective for me? Which one moved the can the furthest? Small, medium, or large? Then the next person would go, okay? First they tried short hair, then they tried medium hair, then they tried long hair. Which of those was the most effective? That's how you would do that. And then as always, you are going to share out with me. Just like last week, we're gonna do a Google form. That really was helpful to me because it kept everyone's answers together. I wasn't having to sift through a thousand emails and I know when we were doing it with email, I missed a couple people. So this way it kept them all together for me, which was really great. So you just click here where it says click here and it will take you to this Google form. Maybe it's gonna take a minute. And just like last week, you're gonna fill it out. Okay, it looks almost exactly the same. There's just a few questions that are different. So you're going to fill it out. Each kid in your house, that is one of my students, so each McCullough kid has to fill out their own. You can't just fill out one for the whole family. I need one for each student, okay? It doesn't take very long to fill out though, so just fill one for each kid. So you make sure you put your first name, your last name, who your teacher is. This is why each person needs their own. And then it says upload a picture or video of your variable. Show me what thing you are changing and testing. So when you get to this Google form, if you don't know how to do it, come back to this video because I'm gonna show you right now. You need to use your phone or use your computer to take some pictures while you are testing. So if you're using different size balloons, give me a picture of you with your different size balloons. If you're putting water in the can, show me how the different you know what, amounts of water you put in. If you're saying, small, medium, large, or excuse me, if you're doing, you know, short, medium, and long hair, show me pictures of the hair that you were rubbing it on, okay? Um, and then it says um, to, or, and to put videos in. I love seeing videos of you guys. It makes me feel like I'm with you. If you can attach a video, I would really love it. So you click add file. If you are on your computer or phone, it says upload. Sorry, it's hidden by my face. It says upload, and it says select files from your device. You're gonna click on that, and then it will open if you have them saved on your computer or your phone, okay? And you can click whatever you wanna do attach, and you just click it and say open, and then you click upload. Or if you have more files for me, you can click add more files, maybe add a video on, add some more pictures on. You can add up to five, okay? Um, then you say upload and it will upload it into the Google form and there it is. Once you see it there, that's how you know I have it, okay? So as long as it's here, it comes to me. You don't have to worry about me getting it. I will get it as long as it's there. Who participated in the challenge with you? Let me know who in your family worked with you. I saw some lot of family members last week. So really, I love that I saw aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas and moms and dads and brothers and sisters. Tell me who was participating with you. I think that's great. Who won challenge number four? Which person chose the variable that allowed the can to roll the farthest? I want to know. Was it you, brother, sister, mom, dad, different family member? Tell me about it. Tell me about the variable you chose to change. What results did you notice? Why do you think that happened? So if you were working with a small, medium, and large balloon, which one was the most effective? If, let's just pretend the small one was most effective, why do you think the small one created more force than the large one or the medium one? Why did that happen? I want you to put your science brain on and try to figure that out because that's what real scientists do. No one gives them the answers. They have to think for themselves. I want you to think for yourself. Why was that the most effective? Then tell me which ones you've done so far. Like I said, it's okay if you have skipped some. It's okay if this is your very first one. 
I'm just curious, which ones have you done? And last but not least, now this is our fourth one. Who is the ultimate Jedi master in your family? So if you've done all four challenges, who won the most challenges? If you have only done three or two or even one, who won the most? I want to know who's the ultimate Jedi in your house. And then just like last week, I'm asking to see how you heard about this week's challenge um, so that if in the fall we are still online, I will know how to best reach you. Okay. So uh, if you have any questions, please just email me. That's the best way to get to me. Just send me an email. Or if you are signed up for my Remind app, you can just text me on that. Um, and if you have any questions, I will be happy to help you. Otherwise, as always, may the force be with you.